Hello, everyone. So we are Huawei, right? We empower a better connected smart grid. Uh, besides Huawei, I think many people already know Huawei. We are known for the cell phone or for the telecom equipment. But besides that, Huawei is starting to sell this ICT equipment to smart grid, uh, to smart grid and smart city. So we have cases not only in the power grid, but also in the uh, railway, in the financial, in the government, and the oil and gas companies. For the power grid industry, we have more than 100 substations, 100,000 substations with our equipment. 160 power companies use Huawei ICT technologies, and we have present 65, world, 65 countries with the power solution. So in the cities, what is the challenges we are facing to be smart? First, we have the public security, the traffic congestion, energy shortage, and citizen development. So for the public security, Huawei have many solutions like the ELTE for safe cities, video surveillance, the traffic congestion, we have sensor networks. For the energy shortage, we have the power grid and we have the AMI solution which can help analyze the, the power consumption. In the citizen development, uh, we believe Huawei can help to develop the education system, e-health system, to improve the people's life. So in the smart city, we believe that we have four, four cores, yeah? the government and city planning, the transportation, the energy, and the people connectivity. So we see ICT as the foundation for the smart city. Why? Because everybody now is communicating. So everybody wants to have a information share. Everybody wants to have high security. Everyone wants to have agile business, means you, ah, I have my business in, I'm the farmer, but I want to sell this my items to overseas. How can I contact some people overseas? They have to have connectivity, and they want to have higher bandwidth. Everyone want to have more bandwidth. So in the smart city, in the smart grid, Huawei has several solutions. We have the dispatching and cloud data center solution. For now we have cloud computing. We have the solar and power plant. We have the transmission optical network or high capacity, and we have distribution automation uh, like Jipong, go to smart houses. And we have the AMI solution as well, IoT solution. So for the AMI solution, the first solution what we have for the energy, and we have the line loss analysis and reduction. Uh, our solution is very strong. We can help to reduce the, uh, to locate a thief in the power grid, about one hour with a few meters of distance error. We can reduce the cost. We, have, we can have billion prepayment online, which would improve people's life because you don't need to go up, make a big line in the bank to pay. And we can help to control the um, high peak of, of energy. So we see AMI just a platform to, in future to go to IoT systems. Why? Because AMI is in the house, it's in the meter of the house. Now India have the deadline to replace these meters. So in future, when you have the IoT, this platform can, can be the same platform for the IoT system. So you don't need to invest more money. Just the platform AMI can use the smart IoT system. So let's say some case of China and China and Power Grid. Huawei contribute more than 50% of the equipment to Chinese corporation, a state grid corporation of China. They own about 90% of a state grid of China and they all build with Huawei equipment. So Huawei is a trustful company, and we have the technology to help India to grow in the smart grid and smart city. So some applications we have in the power grid industry, in the cases of Brazil, we have some company, Copel, they are ICT power utility company. Three years ago, they started to buy Huawei solution, optical solution, and they become a telecom operator as well. So they have branches for power utility cells and telecom. And now they are, they are becoming, they, they sell the fiber to the home equipment, and the future of them is they want to become, the, to have the equipment for a smart home. So in a smart home, Huawei have developed a new gateway, or new gateway is able to, to help through a connect dif different devices to help you control your house or a smart building. Example of this, let's suppose you wake up in the morning, uh, you, you plan to, you can program the status of the AC, some music, alarm system, you leave for work, all the house will be 
will be locked with these sensors and security system, and you can monitor everything by your cell phone. At night, when you come back, you, you can program before you leave, start the air conditioner in case the house is hot. You can maybe program the rice cooker, hot water, and when you go to sleep, the alarm system also lock the, the, the sensors in the house can, can lock and you are safe. Everything controlled by your uh, mobile phone. So that's the new technology Huawei see the vision of the future. Uh, so many concepts of this IoT technology, some of this is, is IFTTT, is if this, then that, maybe you can look at and w or we can talk in the Huawei booth. Um, finally, Huawei have some, so many partners in the industry. We are supporting so many different applications, so many different IoT systems to use with Huawei gateways. Different partners. Uh, in addition, Huawei have sell the, the optical equipment to other companies for transmission because for a smart city, every device will have high bandwidth. So how do you transport a high bandwidth if your backbone, optical backbone is not no enough? So some companies, power grid companies also in Latin America are using <clears throat> their energy transport, energy transmission, and they become energy transmission for optical, and they become telecom carrier of carriers. So they sell bandwidth to different operators in different nations through Huawei equipment in different countries, Brazil, Ecuador, Colombia. And these optical networks are the high capacity networks, 100G or 200G up to 32 terabytes and can transport the, the, the total capacity of a city or state. So this, the power grid company can become a, not only a power grid but ICT company to help evolve to a smart city. So just to close the presentation, we have variety of equipment. We have telepresent, video conference, router, switch, and we have many solutions end-to-end for smart city. That's my presentation. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Pablo, for um, giving, uh, sharing your technical competencies with us. I think end-to-end -end solutions we saw very clearly emerging. Uh, what is interesting is your perhaps your last slide where you said your energy transmission lines can actually become your internet service provider. So this kind of convergence is something that uh, we will eventually see as technologies evolve and our needs um, enhance and there will certainly be a lot of uh, convergence as we move along. Thank you very much for your presentation. Now may I request um, uh, Dr. Narendra Singh from uh, Bureau of Indian Standards um, to give his presentation, please. Friends, uh, Dr. Narendra Singh is a scientist F from uh, Bureau of Indian Standards. Uh, he heads electronics and IT uh, vertical there at BIS. Hello, everybody. No, actually, I would be talking about, again, standardization. Uh, many of the earlier speakers have also talked about standards. But I, being the member from National Standard Body, maybe give you a holistic view. And in different segments of uh, uh, fields and how stimulation is done. <clears throat> this is just about history of BIS, uh, established in 1947 under Society Act, then became a statutory body under an act of parliament in 1986. These are the core activities of BIS. We formulate standards and we are the national standard body. Then we are into certification products through product certification schemes. We are also into system certification schemes, so various systems, management system, environment management, energy management, all types of management systems. Then we have testing as our activities. We have our own labs. And for our certification purpose, we also use other labs which are of repute and accredited by BIS through its setup procedures. Then we have a full-fledged training institute where we part all kinds of trainings. We have also been imparting trainings uh, for the developing countries. And uh, it has been acknowledged by the international standards bodies that while training these developing countries in various fields of standardization is acknowledged because we have 
trained many, many people from these developing countries. This is our standards formulation structure. Bureau is the policy making body. Then we have a standards advisory committee, an umbrella committee. Then we have division councils, and there are 14 division councils. This, this is an umbrella committee supervises the work of various technical committees. Then under this, there are sectional committees, which are actually technical committees. And these technical committees are assisted by various subcommittees and panels in their core areas when there are specific fields. Though sectional committee is authorized to frame the standards, but these panels and subcommittees assist the sectional committees. National standards are formulated based on the concept of consensus. We normally do not have a voting practice. We come to one solution. Even if there are devi deviations, we try to reconcile and come to a common solution. There are 14 divisions in BIS through which we cover almost all the fields of activities, like electronics and IT, petroleum, civil, mechanical, metallurgy, in all areas are covered through these 14 divisions. Electronics and IT division looks after the standardization activity in the area of electronics and IT. This is the standard formulation process. Means proposals are received, then they are converted into working draft, P draft, then once matured, they are circulated for public comments as wide circulation drafts. And once agreed by the committee, they are framed as Indian standards or special publications. At national level, we have, uh, under LITDC, we have 25 technical committees looking after the standardization in different areas. At international level, we are the members of IEC and ISO, IEC JTC1. Electronics area is seen by IEC and IT standards are under joint technical committees. There are 18 technical committees under JTC1. Technical committees act as national mirror committees for various IEC, ISO, and joint technical committees. There could be one-to-one, -one, many-to-one, or one-to-many mapping for various international committees. We are P members in many of our other uh, ISO and IEC committees, where we have we can technically contribute, participate in meetings, and we have an obligation to vote on these international documents, for which we get comments or voting uh, suggestions from our stakeholders through technical committees. In some of the committees, we are also O members. As O member, you do not have a voting right, but you have access to these documents and also can technically contribute. This is uh, the process of part uh, participation in international standardization activity. And this is similar to our activity, only the designation nomenclature of various drafts and stages changes. We also hold chairmanship of some of the IEC, ISO committees, and also hold technical secretariat for international committees. This under electronics IT division, we have 25 committees, and we have around 1,479 standards, out of which 453 standards are harmonized with ISO IEC standards. And another 547 are technically equivalent, means they are the base standards are international standards. But suiting our national needs, we make some changes. So they are technically equivalent. Then 479 standards where there are no, no international standards or they do not suit us, we make indigenous standards through the work of uh, or uh, contribution from our stakeholders. <clears throat> These are 25 committees, and LITD 10 is Power System Control and Associated Communications, which is important and which looks after the various standards in the smart grid SCADA domain. <clears throat> so these are 25 uh, committees. So LITD 10, Power System Control and Associated Communication, prepares standards on power system control equipment and system systems including energy management system, distribution management system, SCADA, supervisory control and data acquisition, distribution automation, smart grid, teleprotection, 
and associated communications used in planning, operation, and maintenance of power systems. This LITDT C10 has less than or is a P member of ICTC 57, Power System Management and Associated Information Exchange, and ICTC 118, Smart Grid User Interface. Under this committee, there are 30 members, member organizations, under which there are seven panels looking after different subjects, and we have prepared 39 standards under this committee. <clears throat> These are the important standards from the smart gate perspective. IS 15953 is supervisory control and data acquisition, data SCADA system for power system applications. Then IS 16334 is power system communications interoperability guidelines. Then 16335, there is another standard, power control systems, security requirements. These two standards are underpinned. Then this IS 16336 series of standards on common information model for information exchange in the context of electrical utilities. It is in under three parts, companion specification, SIM extension for ABT based regulated markets and load setting and restoration mechanism. Mm -hmm. The application use cases for system operation. This is also under print. Then one draft specification document for advanced metering infrastructure is as a P draft. It is a preliminary draft under the consideration of the committee. This is SCADA system for power system applications provides definition and guidelines for the specification performance analysis and application of supervisory control and data acquisition system for use in electrical utilities. These can also be used for remote operation of substation. Then 16334 power system communications interoperability guidelines. This is the scope of the standard. The standard provides guidelines for achieving interoperability for utilities and applications covering traditional value chain, generation, transmission, and distribution. The newer elements, trading, risk management, renewable generation, etc., and ICT and automation technologies. This this standard specifies requirements for identification and protection of critical assets for all entities involved in generation, transmission, distribution, and trading of electrical power. It covers the following areas, critical assets, identification and monitoring, security management for personal and assets, electronic and physical security of assets, incident reporting and response and covering planning, auditing and conformance procedures. This again I have taken the scope of this series of standard common information model, I think I will not go through this. This is then the document specification for advanced meeting infrastructure. The standard specifies the AMI framework, which lays down the foundation for a two way communication between a meter and a central head and systems. Then there are other related committees because uh, many people had raised uh, issues. We have which are related to or have liaison with LITD-10, ETD-13, Equipment for Electrical Energy Measurement and Load Control, then ETD-46 for Grid Integration, then ETD-40, HVDC Power Systems, and LVDC Panels. Because uh, some of the earlier speakers talked about interoperability, cyber security, data security. For the information of the house, I would like to tell that we have, there are committees on IT and cyber securities which are working independently. Also, uh, for working on data security, there are many, many standards have been brought up. And we are also very actively participating in the JTC1 committees. And uh, there are many experts from India in these committees. And they are also performing very important roles, leader roles, like operators, uh, editors, co-editors, and uh, conveners of these panels. And uh, recently, we also had a meeting in October 2015, this uh, IT and cyber security SC27 meeting in India, in which uh, about 350 delegates participated, and around 80 delegates from India participated very actively in these committees. So we are also looking into these areas. We are also in biometric security, uh, standards. Uh, we are uh, preparing for UIDI, 
so the, all these uh, domains are taken care. Uh, this is uh, for the information of the house. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, just uh, uh, last few um, sentences I would like to say. We have also a civil engineering department, which is very relevant, which is looking after the smart city committee. And that is the umbrella committee. And various other committees are working closely with that committee. With smart infrastructure uh, in the morning, Mr. Narang also said we, we have start set up a panel and we are working very clo closely in that, so following the international work and also trying to uh, examine what we could do at our end. Thank you. Thank you very much.